What a year you've had. You announced your biggest acquisition yes. ever, yes. Red Hat. Yes. You sold assets to HCL. You uh, did a deal, manufacturing deal with Samsung. First, let's talk Red Hat. Yes. What does that do yes. for IBM? Yes. Where does that pivot the company? Well, as you know, we have been reinventing IBM. So when we just had our earnings, as you mentioned, 50% uh, of the company, pretty steadily now, 50% has moved into these new products and services. But you're always redoing the portfolio. And one of the things that with the acquisition, I'll get to, than the divestitures, but the acquisition was really about what we see in front of us for what I call Chapter 2 of the cloud. I really believe for most enterprises, Chapter 1 was easy things that they moved, pretty low-hanging fruit, and if you size it, 20% is what's moved to the cloud. The other 80 now becomes not just more complex, it's got a different complexion. Most companies weren't born yesterday, so they, just like if you have a house already, you've, you've got your house, and they say, okay, these rooms I'm not going to touch, I'm going to leave them as they are, these are going to get remodeled, moved to the public cloud these you know what they're so sensitive I'm gonna keep them right here and put them in a private cloud I mean, that's so a great way to put it that's really what Red Hat and us together says for all you cl clients out there this journey now is you're gonna have multiple clouds they have between 5 and 16 they're difficult to manage the security move the data and don't get locked into anyone. And so what we we now become the greatest proponent of open and open source. And so part of Red Hat is how you build things so that they can move from cloud to cloud in private and around. So this allows clients to move to a multi-cloud era open so they're not locked in in a very secure way so they make their cloud journey uh, from where they start and it really allows us to own the be sort of starting point and the ending point of a cloud journey be so be that's part of the portfolio yeah, before, before we go to the rest in, in terms of the divestitures and, and your plans how do you differentiate yourself in that business because you've got all these guys nipping at your nails you, yes. heels you've got Microsoft here and Google there and then there's Amazon yes. Amazon wants to take market share from everybody yes. so tell us the sales pitch or how you differentiate at IBM. Yes. Well, well first off, I th when you think of IBM, think of your mission critical work and then think of us as the one that we believe it'll be a multi-cloud world but we believe we'll have the most secure public cloud for mission critical work, but we'll also help you manage and integrate all these other clouds together. So we are the, I would call the cloud for business is how I differentiate us. And, and big business as well as small and As well as small, we've got plenty. Because that's a big, a big part of the business, Hundreds right? Hundreds of thousands of small clients as right, well, right. right? And so you'll just see a different mix between how what percentage runs on a public cloud versus a private cloud. And I mean, you probably don't realize that most clients, they may have their CRM system, their sales with Salesforce, they may have an HR system with SAP or with Workday. They already have all of these different real estate. But all of us know the big job is how to manage it, access control, security, know what data is where, and how much data do you want flowing. So these are all the things that actually this is why I say it's chapter two. Now we get, and that's a trillion dollar market, chapter two. We will be number one in what the world calls hybrid cloud. That is chapter two and we'll be number one. That's a differentiation. Is there a cultural difference? I mean, Red Hat and IBM, two very different companies. How do you get that culture uh, right? Yeah, I've, I've always heard this. Right, and uh, and I've known Jim Whitehurst, and we know Red Hat for many, many years. We've partnered with them for oh my goodness gracious, it goes back to our familiarity and our investment in Linux goes back 20 years. Linux is the open operating system, what people mostly think of when they think of open. And so we're one of the greatest contributors, one of the top contributors of all the projects out there. So I think counter to what may be a perception is, IBM is the greatest supporter of open source. So there are some things we have that are proprietary, but you and I have talked about blockchain. That's all open source. We open source that on purpose to make it fly. And in fact, Red Hat's got it, Linux, the operating system. It's the number one operating system in a company on premise as well as now in the cloud. This year took over number one over the others. And so we. Um we view this as part of our DNA to be open and one of the, so I don't see it cultural, but I do see two things. We're going to preserve for them though. It's really important what they do, not just runs on IBM, it's going to run on all of our competitors and, you know, friendly competition as well. These are our clients use all these. So it will be on all the other clouds. We want that to, and we want to preserve that and make sure that they have equal opportunity on what they do. 
And then what we do is we take the same uh, products from Red Hat, we add to it, and then we'll we'll compete in that world. You've called them the strategic imperatives. Yes, and, yes, and around cloud, around analytics, around mobility. Is, yeah. And that's the part of the business that's uh, well over uh, getting 50% now. Anything else you want to say about how you're repositioning the portfolio, well, given the other the, things, it, it, like look, the divestitures? We, as an investor would always expect, we always go back over this portfolio. And what IBM is, a high-value company, which means we are always, if you've been around 100, 108 now, mm -hmm. to be another 100, it, you've always got to keep moving the portfolio. And our value proposition to investors is that it is about we always move to higher value, which means it's not always about growth for us, because we will remove products that are starting to commoditize so that we can always fuel investment in the next era. And so what we did there, what you saw was some products that really they were standalone and they weren't growing. And we said, look, our value prop to a client is we integrate things for them. If these are standalone, there's a better fit for them. And so we did a divestiture. It's about $2 billion of divestitures there that really don't line up. They're individual with our integrated uh, value proposition. And so that's all part, and we'll continue to keep looking at that.